I received more than 3,000 successful connections from all over the world. This is going to be fun, guys. I promise. From June 28th to July 31st, I recorded more than 3,000 successful SSH connections from all over the world. All I had to do was to expose my Raspberry Pi through my router's DMZ. And running Kari. Kari is a medium to high interaction SSH designed to lock brute force attacks and shell interactions. Sessions contained a diverse set of interactions, Trojans, rootkits, and even hello messages. I also stored more than one week of network traffic. During that week, our little Raspberry Pi interacted with more than 8,000 IPs. My mission in this video is to analyze threat data, including network data, session logs, and how honeypots can be leveraged to understand threats. I will also propose some basic mitigation techniques. For this honeypot project, I selected a Raspberry Pi. I replaced the factory image by Ubuntu 20 LTS, which is available at the official Ubuntu webpage. Kauri was selected as the honeypot software because of the following features. It logs all SSH login attempts, and it also creates a file with all the commands that were executed during the session. It supports SFTP and FTP for file upload. For recording the network logs, I selected TCP dump because it's a simple and effective tool to get the job done. And it also has a huge community support. To geocode the IP addresses, I use GeoIP. The setup was quite easy. I connected the Raspberry Pi directly to my router using an Ethernet cable. And for the power source, I connected the Raspberry Pi again to the router, but to the USB diagnostics port of the router. That way, no more cables or chargers were needed. Then, I had to expose the Raspberry Pi through the DMC. Now we're connected to the honeypot. And there are a couple of folders I would like to talk to you about. I mentioned that I received more than 3,000 connections. Let me show you how I counted the successful SSH connections. First thing we have to do is go to, uh, to carry, carry, um, bar, log, and carry again. Here we have all these log files. So carry uses JSON logs and it, like plain terminal messages. So there's an expression we can use. So this is an expression used to get all the login messages. And then, so first we get all the login messages and then we count them. There you go. That's how we got that number. Out of all these sessions, only a subset of them have a commands. So let's go ahead and find all those sessions and I'll show you a few. Kauri, Kauri, slash, ty. If we want to count them, then what you do is you do ls, word count, and then line. So count the lines. So that's how we got our number right there. Um, uh, now what I'm going to do is, through the magic of addition, I'm going to show you a, a nice histogram with uh, all the sessions and the dates where uh, they occurred. Keep in mind that I'm showing only days where sessions occurred. Now there are a couple of interesting sessions I would like to uh, share with you. So if I say play log and then I pass the TTY file, then it like replays what the attacker did. So we can see that they connected to this server to download the file. And then they tried to connect to another server, but that didn't work. So I wonder, I wonder what, what you know, what were the contents of that file? So I'm going to just go to virus total and show you what it, what it is. And then I'm going to paste the hash of the file. And uh, yeah, it's Mirai. I think that Mirai was originally designed to win at Minecraft. Literally, you will like go to a website and then pay some students to like target their botnet to DDoS your opponents at Minecraft and then the 
As you guys know, uh, the thing went uh, a little bit uh, out of control. Alright, so let's look at another attack. So here we can see that the, re the attacker rewrote the path environment variable and then it, it downloaded a file from an HTTP server and then it tried to change the permissions, tried to execute it. Let's see what the file was. You can see it's an XOR DDoS. And okay, so this is a factor that arrives on a system as a file dropped by other malware or as a file downloaded unknowingly by users when visiting malicious sites. The funny thing is why do they call it XOR DDoS? Because it is XOR encrypted, which is something that we saw in class. Yeah, so see, this is how we show like a nice map in a browser. The IPs that we detected are clearly like mostly on the US and Europe and China. Another thing that you might want to see is a ARP poisoning. That will be the same, like a machine with the same MAC address using different IPs. So Wireshark has a built-in filter for that. You might, you might want to look into it nothing so we don't see proof of, of that kind of uh, art poisoning in 2020 there are still enough SSH servers out there that use a default password to still make it an attractive business for hackers to continue to crawl the internet searching for victims a virus total is not 100% accurate when trying to detect malware. This is not a criticism of VirusTotal, but a reminder that there's always going to be a delay between when a new piece of software is released out into the wild and used in real attacks, and when antivirus software can actually detect it. I believe it is upon us as engineers and security professionals to contribute to the community by reporting and uploading samples of the malware to malware repositories. I would like to propose some recommendations to prevent attacks like this. OEMs to perform periodic port scanning to help customers to prevent exposing services. Currently, all iOS devices, Android phones, macOS computers, and Windows computers connect to home base. They do that to receive software updates and push notifications. I propose that as part of that process, OEMs, so that's like Apple, Google, they could perform a soft port scanning to determine if the computer has some ports open that maybe the customer didn't intend it to. As recommended by CISA, that is Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, creating an accurate and detailed OT, so that's Operational Infrastructure Devices, map, will provide the foundation for a sustainable cyber risk reduction. Remove access from networks, if applicable, that do not have any legit reason to communicate with your system. Thank you for watching.